let's be honest guys, if you subscribe to this channel, it probably wasn't a Watch Me Bowl. However, today, we get to watch the best in the world bowl, and I mean that truly. My name is Ben and we're at Rockford Brett Cherry Bowl here. Uh, the kickstart, uh, very first event of the PWBA Tour in Rockford, Illinois. This is the home of the PWBA and it's day two of qualifying. They are cut down to the top 27 here that are currently bowling. their third round of qualifying. Interesting part about this event as well as a lot of the other PWBA events is that they don't do match play. Everything is just raw pins, raw qualifying, and then they're gonna cut to the top five after 24 games of qualifying for the show tomorrow. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. I'm gonna be jumping around to a few of the different ladies tour stops, and I really wanna be able to show you how good that these ladies are, because in my opinion, the women are better than the men. Now let me qualify that statement. I think that they're all phenomenal bowlers. However, because of the fact that the women can't always just jump way left, Throw it 100 miles an hour, put 550 revs on it, and just push it through whatever there is on the lane. They actually have to play them right. So what happens is transition is a little bit more predictable for them, but also their moves have to be much more in tune with what's actually happening. Very in tune with topography, very in tune with pair to pair, very in tune with what the pins are doing in the pin deck. It's a lot more of an intuitive uh, and intelligent game on the women's tour than it is on the men's tour. Men's tour is very much focused on power, very much focused on just pushing the pins straight back. Uh, and the women's is definitely more crafty. Honestly, from a bowling products perspective, I really enjoy it a lot more. Uh, this place hooks a ton. So after day one, what it kind of seems like from the scoreboard is that the girls that can throw it a little bit faster and also have a decent amount of tilt in their game are really just kind of push it through the fronts and push it through the mids rather than letting their ball kind of get through it really succeeded brianna clemmer had a massive lead coming into today and now today you've got Liz Culkin, who can throw pretty fast. You've got Liz Johnson, who is the GOAT, but she can also throw pretty fast. It's all these girls that are able to probably stay a little bit further right, stay a little bit more in the track area, because it is only a 38 foot pattern with a decent amount of ratio in it too. So they're more playing the mid lane, more so playing it so that the house is gonna hook and not die. So it'll be pretty cool to watch. We'll check in after the first round of qualifying and see where we're at. Thank you. 
27 bowlers were left. Now there's 12 bowlers left. This remaining 12 is kind of ridiculously good. Brianna Klemmer, Liz Culkin, Stephanie Johnson, Brandy Kordaleski, who is formerly Brandy Branca, for those that don't know, Shannon O'Keefe, Verity Crawley, Birgit Norex, I'm probably saying that wrong, Birgit, I apologize. Kelly Kulik, Ashley Galante, Chelsea Klingler, definitely a newbie out here, which is super exciting for her. Liz fucking Johnson and Dasha Kovalova. They have six more games and they are going to cut to five. Currently, fifth is 342 over and 12th is 227 over. So there's no bonus pins, no match play. So that's gonna be a big hill to climb for Dasha for sure, but it's still only 120 pins, 125 pins. As much as it sounds crazy, catch a hot streak, you never know. First place is uh, Brianna at 513 over. She's still ahead of everybody by about 80. So she is currently the wire to wire leader, but uh, she didn't have that good of a block. Last block, couldn't really get the back row to fall over uh, consistently. Interesting thing about this event from what I've seen so far is even though it's kind of a score fest, it's also been kind of a struggle. It, it's, it's a weird balance because it's like when it's hot, it's hot at like 240, but when it's bad, it's like 160. It'd be interesting to see how these next uh, next six teams play out. You know, you got 12 of the best female bowlers in the world gunning it out for the top five here. Uh, we've got a lot of them that are right in contention. 342 is the number. You got five that are below that that are within 100. Level intensity hopefully goes up a little bit. They're all pushed right together. They're all just on six pairs right in a row. Although Ashley, Galante, and Dasha are dancing over there right now and they're setting up the show behind the curtain. There's going to be some pretty intense shots here. So hopefully we can catch something pretty cool. Uh, we can see who can make this top five. She is up by four. Liz Culkin has had a really, really good start to her uh, last qualifying uh, block here. The rest of the field is actually kind of shaping out where the show is not necessarily set, but it's pretty close. But then in sixth is Birgit. She's at 341 compared to Shannon's 415. So she's 74 behind her with three games left. There's still some jockeying that's going on in the lower positions. You know, every spot's worth a little bit more money and they're, that's why they're out here. This is their job. But at this point, it's really just about those five that are on the show. What are what are our seeds look like? Is it Brianna or Liz Culkin? One seed, and then how does three, four, five kind of play out? Transition this round has been rough. It's super tight down lane compared to the last round. I think that's mostly due to just more mid lane friction. I think a big part of it too is just the fact that it's down to 12 and it's 12 that know where they have to be. So the track area per, uh, within this house and within this pattern transitioned faster because they were all playing in very similar zones, even with different hand positions and different bowling balls and surfaces and whatnot. Let's see what these ladies got to finish up this qualifying round and hopefully we can talk to our tournament leader when they're all set.
exciting. You know, obviously to get back in the competitive environment of the PWBA is exciting in itself, but obviously to bowl as well as I did and be the number one seed, which is, by the way, my first time ever being a number one seed on the PWBA tour. Um, interesting fact. It's awesome. Obviously, everybody wants to start the season out well. It's really not much better than being the number one seed on the show. But obviously, there's still work to be done. So as much as I'm excited, kind of rein it in a little and remember there's still work to be done tomorrow. Fortunately, with my experience on the tour, I've been able to kind of know that every time the pattern gets laid down, it's flatter, it's harder, it transitions faster, and obviously, during the cashers round, it transitions faster because you have more, less girls, but you have more girls with higher rev rate, you know, throwing in the same spot more consistently, and that affects a lot of different things. This morning, I think that they were harder, they were flatter to start with. Um, when we came back in the afternoon, I don't know if the lanes, I don't think the lanes sat as long as they did in the morning, so they were a little bit tighter. I thought they were a little bit easier, um, but they definitely transitioned a lot faster, which I'm not surprised about because I think a lot of girls started further left than they did this morning. Fortunately, I was able to get left, which I think is what helped me um, during the block, mm -hmm. um, and usually that is what something that benefits me is just being able to get left of all the mess. I was throwing an ASIM, which helped me because I think if I throw a sim, I, it would just read the body of the lane too much and I would have split like crazy. I was throwing a conspiracy scheme, which is an asim radical ball, and I didn't get, I wasn't going to get in trouble very much with that ball, and what I mean by that is I was going to hit the pocket, the only thing is if I didn't catch it the way I was going to, I flat tend, which honestly was fine right now. That's something really important is to see what the scoring pace is like. Okay, is flat 10 okay right now? Yes, it is, because 210 is like 290. So that's something that I've learned and I think that's what saved me is I was able to just stay around the pocket and stay out of trouble. Yeah. What is your advice to yourself going into tomorrow? It's, I have to say, it's a benefit to be a lower seed just because you do get to bowl on the TV show and not under the lights and see the lanes transition right in front of your eyes. It's hard for a number one, even a number two seed to walk into a set, really not walk into it blind, but kind of walk into it blind. My advice to myself is to spend more time watching what's going on the TV set than trying to go over here and figure out balls and stuff like that. That stuff is still important, but I want to really pay attention to what the girls are doing, how they're breaking down, what balls are they throwing, because I think that's really important to prepare yourself. Yeah, for sure. Well, fantastic bowling, Liz. It was a pleasure Thank meeting you. Thank you so much, Ben. Appreciate Best it. It was tomorrow. great to meet you. Yeah. So as soon as you think you know what's going to happen, don't hold your breath. That's exactly what I just learned to that last couple of games of that block. That block came down to the last five frames for four girls, which is how much more can you ask for, right? I was talking to Jason Thomas while it was all going on, and I, was, I had to compliment him on the format because I didn't think about this. When they started the round of 12, they went one through 12 on 13 and 14, down to however many lanes that takes, 12 lanes, so 26, and they moved together. So one and two moved together, three and four moved together, so on and so forth. And they stayed proximate to each other as well. It's because they just skipped a pair, skipped two pairs, whatever. And it was a position round for six games. Position rounds are like the most fun parts of so many tournaments, and they got to do it for six whole games. Not only were they really uh, up to the idea on scores and making sure that everybody knew what was happening within a few frames of the start of the next game, but also they were right next to each other and they were being able to feel that pressure every time somebody put up a double or maybe take a sigh of relief when somebody split. So Shannon O'Keefe gave away about a 100 pin uh, lead over sixth place uh, games four and five. Uh, looks completely lost, makes, it, makes the big jump down to the low side, puts up the front seven, uh, ultimately shoots like 240 to get into the number four seed. She actually jumps Stephanie Johnson by a couple of pins as well. So we got Stephanie, Shannon, Kelly, Brianna, and Liz. Honestly, I don't think you could ask for much of a better show. Uh, you've got some legends on there. And you've got uh, Brianna, who is a newbie. You know, I don't think she's officially a rookie anymore, but you know, this is her first show, so it'll be pretty cool to watch. But there's a lot you can learn in watching something like this play out. And it is really, don't assume that you know what's gonna happen. There's a reason that they, they play the game. There's a reason that they got 10 more frames. And even though it feels like everything has shaped out to be the way that it's gonna be, don't give those frames away because you're a seven bagger away from running right back into it. But that's gonna be it for this one, guys. Be sure to check out the show on CBS Sports Network. Thank you all so much for checking it out. If you haven't done so yet already, be sure to scroll down, hit that subscribe button, like this video, share it with your friends so that they can see what it took to get to the show. And as always, don't forget, your best life is a 10-pin life. See ya.